So we're on body number 12 today. The previous four verses we've seen have focused on the glory of one who's reached a state of deep and profound awareness through listening. The following four verses talk about the status of people who are described as manne. So let us begin by just looking at the spelling of the word and to try and understand what that word means. So in this verse we'll come across two words that sound exactly the same with a very slight variation. The first word we've come across several times before, which is man, which is talking about the mind. A word with a sihari usually means within that object. So here man with a sihari is within the mind, inside the mind. The second word has a little tippy on top. And that word does not mean mind, that means accepting, man. In Punjabi we might say galaman, accept what I'm about to say. So here in Gurbani the spelling of those two words is slightly different. And there's, with this second word, there's a bit more emphasis on the N sound, man to accept, to know. And this word man also has some variations. We'll come across at the beginning of this verse the word manne. If the word man means to accept, manne are the people who accept. The word manne are talking about the people who are in this state of mind. In the next verse, we will come across manne. Manne in the first one with a lam. The next verse we'll talk about manne that has a dulam here. Manne is not talking about the people but the benefits of being in this state. Man karke. Man ne. So first verse we will talk about man ne. This section has four verses just like the sonia. But here the first verse is all about man ne, the people. The next three verses about manne, the benefits of being in this state, the outcome of being in this state. What is the result of these people, the state that they're in, what are the outcomes of that? So ju that's just a little bit about what we're going to be covering. Man, the mind. Man, manne, manne is all about accepting. Now if we go back to the previous four verses, if we just think a little bit about what Guru Nanak Dev Ji was saying, so much emphasis, so much greatness was given to people who were in this state of deep listening, of awareness through listening. Sonia, and so much greatness was pouring out for those people, for that state, the benefit of being in that state of mind. And it was talking about people were the equivalent of Isa, Burma, Ind, Sheikh, Peer, Patsha. That is the level that they reach. So you could almost ask the question, if there is so much value that's been given to that state of listening, performing that sunyeh is so important. 
If so much can be achieved by listening, then what is the point of going any further? Isn't listening to the Guru's message enough? Because we talked about J ik gurki sik suni mat vich ratan jawahar manak J ik gurki sik suni If you listen just once to the teaching of the Guru, the mind will be overflowing with diamonds and jewels and rubies. And the last four verses have really elaborated on that point. Isn't that enough? In verse 5, we get a little bit of an answer to this question. Guruji says that in order to reach the final goal, there's a combination of Gaviye, Sunye, Manarakhiye Pao. So Sunye is just one cog in the larger piece that we have to become the larger, complex dimension that we have to enter. And it involves Gavye, singing, Sunye, awareness through listening, and Man Rakhye Pao, placing. So this is the word Man there. Pao, which is love, within the mind. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying that that workaholic mind needs to have a loving focus. Love needs to enter that mind. Love has to be the driving force for that mind. The main driving force for the mind is usually survival. The mind wants to survive and to succeed. Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying that love has to be the final driving force for the mind. So, Manne is a person who isn't just accepting of the Guru's message, but has lovingly taken that message on board. So, how do we lovingly accept the Guru's message? And why is this oneness and this message of the Divine and Ikunkar? And all the wonderful things we've talked about so far, why is it so difficult to accept? Why hasn't this become the driving force in our life? And the truth of the matter is that the world and the people within the world have simply not experienced this non-dual state that Guru Nanak is talking about. Guru Nanak is talking about right from the beginning, ik that me and everything else is one thing. In fact, there is no me, there is only it. And we simply spend our whole lives in a completely different state of mind. Our state of mind is me, myself and I, and everything else is secondary, and everything else is separate from me. This is what we call duality. But to us, this feels real. And it feels real because of our senses. Because of what we can see with our eyes, we can hear, we can smell, we can taste, we can touch. And because of our senses, our vision of the world is based on these five senses. In Punjabi, we call these senses Gyan Indriya. All the knowledge that we have is based on these senses. And the Guru is teaching us something that is the opposite of everything that we know, everything that we can touch, everything that we can feel. He's teaching us something completely the opposite. And in fact, what the Guru is teaching us feels completely unnatural. Everything that we know and our interaction with Maya feels natural. So how can we accept something we haven't seen? Does the Guru just want you to believe something that you've never known, something you've never seen? But the truth is 
you have seen God. The truth is, you are seeing God right now. You are hearing God right now. You are touching God right now. You are tasting God right now. That is the truth. That is the, simply the little switch that has to happen within you. And our problem is that we keep expecting God to be something else. Mr. God. We keep waiting for that guy. When, we've con when we are blinded by the fact that all around us is that guy. But we're looking for some guy. We're looking for a person. We still call him God. And even though Gurbani hasn't used a word like that, we've simply superimposed our vision of God with the word Vaheguru. Vaheguru doesn't mean God. Ikonkar doesn't mean Mr. God. But because that whole idea of God is so ingrained within us, when we say Vaheguru, we look up. Paramatma. We go as far as to calling God Uparwala. When Guru Nanak is saying Andarwala. So Guruji isn't asking you to believe something you haven't known. Guru is simply asking you to change what you know and how you see everything that you know. But all we can see is Maya. Let's think about this word Maya for a second. Maya is a very interesting word that has no equivalent in English. If we wanted to translate Maya, maybe we could say the illusion. Maya is the illusion. The illusion of what? The illusion of separation. The illusion that A is different to B, that I am different to you. That is an illusion. And that illusion feels real to us. We're lost in that illusion. When Guruji is saying that this is a dream, this is fake, he's not saying that the planet Earth doesn't exist. He's not saying that your body doesn't exist. He's saying the simply that the illusion of separation doesn't exist. So this duality is an illusion. That is what we call Maya. It is not that you aren't here. It is that you aren't you. Something is here, but it's not you. You are the illusion. Now, when an illusion is finding truth, and the illusion doesn't want to break its own illusion, how will it find the truth? Truth is all around you, but the one searching is stuck in a bubble of illusion. What has to break? The illusion has to break. The bubble has to break, and then the truth that was always there gets revealed. This is what Guruji is talking about. So Guruji isn't asking you to believe anything. Belief has no room in Sikhi. We can categorically say that we do not believe in God. What is the purpose of belief? Belief means to put your faith in something that you don't know to be true. I'll repeat that. Belief means to put your faith in something that you don't know to be true. And that's how all religions 
and common practice and all of society is expecting you to just believe in God. Guru Nanak Dev Ji's relationship with the divine wasn't a belief. Guru Nanak Dev Ji didn't believe in God. We are believing in the fact that we exist. That is the belief that we hold right now. We believe we exist. That's the thing that has to break. And that's the belief that Guru Nanak Dev Ji is trying to break. This is the Maya that Guruji talks about. You know, it's very easy to think about Maya as everything else, something separate. But you are the biggest Maya. Your very existence is the Maya, is the illusion. When you go deep within yourself and you find through listening what the Guru has already revealed, saying that this is already there. When you find that within yourself and you accept that this is the ultimate reality, this is the ultimate purpose of our life, then you become manne. One who has seen it, who has changed the way they think through experience, not through belief. Through experience, they've known themselves to be more than this illusion. They become manne. And that is why Guruji begins this first line by saying, those people, manne ki gat kahi na jai. Let's be careful of the pronunciation here. The first verse is manne. It has a lam. Manne. The second verse in this series is manne. The difference is manne, manne. Lav, dulav. So here we're saying manne. Manne is the one who constantly understands, who constantly knows, and who has lovely, lovingly accepted the truth within themselves. Manne is the one who has lovingly accepted the truth of their true nature. The word gat comes from gati. It means the level or the status. You might use the word avastha, that spiritual level that they are at. Guru Nanak Dev Ji says, Manne ki gat kahi na jai. It cannot be described what level these people are at, what status they have, <clears throat> if we have to translate that line. The accepting one's status cannot be described. This is the ultimate level. An interesting thing to notice, how much description Guruji gave for Sunya. Sunya Isar Barma Ind. Sunya Sid Peer Surnath. Sunya Atsat Ka Isnan. Sunya Sheikh Peer Patsha. So Guruji gave a lot of description of this status of deep listening. But manne is beyond description. Manne ki gat kahi na jai. And think about the line just before this. Nanak pagta sadavigas. It's the pagats who are at this state. Why are they at this state? The word sada there is very important. <clears throat> this isn't just talking about people who have gone there and come back. This is talking about people who have reached that level and are constantly at that level. 